All right, the hat's back on. Usually do the hat when I get a brand new haircut at the barber, so I go a few days. But it's back on now, and today I'm talking about Guerlain's Le Absolute de Orient collection. I've been wanting to do this collection video for a while, but it's better late than never to do it today, right? Especially since there's a freaking price hike on these fragrances. In the USA, the prices have gone up from $200 per 125 ml bottle to $260 per 125, uh, 125 ml bottle. Go figure, that's a lot of a uh, you know, price hike. That's a major price hike is what I should say. But either way, I'm gonna talk about these eight fragrances. One of them is discontinued and I have a bottle. Where is that one? It's right here. Oh, here it is, Ombre Eternal. I can see why this got discontinued really quickly, but, but, there's a but, there's a big but. Um, this one is also off of the USA Guerlain website, Patchouli Ardent, which actually came out in 2020, two years ago. Why is this off of there? Anyway, all discussed, coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yes, today I'm talking about the collection called Le Absolute de Orient from Guerlain. I believe the fragrances in here used to be in a different collection. And actually, I have the original collection version of Bois Mysterio. And I think I also have the original collection fragrance for Musk Noble. But I can't 100% make sure that this other one is Musk Noble. But I definitely can tell that uh, Bois Mysterio used to be a completely different fragrance and I'm drawing the blank with the name. But yes, I've been wanting to do a video about this collection because I really do enjoy it. But I noticed earlier this year, like a couple weeks ago, that the prices got jacked up. Why is that happening? There's another brand that jacked up prices as well, which I'm doing another video on, Chanel. Stay tuned for that. But these went up $60 per 125ml bottle. I mean, they only come in 125ml anyway, so they used to be 200 Now on the Guerlain USA website, they're 260 per bottle. That's really a major increase. I wanna find out what you guys think about this collection. Uh, are you fans of it? And do you have a favorite in the collection? And what do you think about this price hike? If there are fragrances out there that you can get your hands on at the old price, or ones at the discounters where they do discount, get them now, because I think 260 is quite pricey, personally. But that's what's going on with this one. And also, the Patchouli Ardent is no longer on the USA website. I mean, they have six fragrances there, I think. Yes, uh, currently it's only seven uh, total, because uh, Ombre Eternal has been discontinued. But they do show advertising or promo photos of the entire collection on the Guerlain USA website, which includes uh, this one. But you can't actually physically buy this one because it's completely removed as a product. So are they doing what they did with the Lome Ideal collection where only some of them are available here and most of all of them are available in Europe? I don't know, but this is off of the USA website. So if you're a fan of this and you don't have a bottle, definitely get yourself a bottle. But you know what? Let's go ahead and get started with the first one, the discontinued one. I've ranked it at the lowest and I'm talking about a total of eight fragrances today from the Guerlain Le Absolute Orient collection. Ombre Eternal, I can see why it got discontinued. It launched in 2016 and I believe it was already discontinued by 2019 so three years later but if this one is discontinued man uh, that one went faster although I think I still see it selling in, in, in Europe but this one I know it's completely gone and the reason I can see why this one went away it's really really animalic and I have a challenging time wearing it and this one I did not buy I have a friend who collects who just gifted it to me just uh, late last year so I'm glad to have it I'll pull it out to smell it but as I said it's quite animalic it has notes of leather ambergris woods coriander cardamom cinnamon peach ylang ylang a lot of interesting notes but to me it's a very animalic leathery amber experience and they're not using like the sweet syrupy resinous amber here they're using ambergris which is the stuff uh, that the the whale regurgitates and it gets washed up in the ocean so it's definitely got uh, the animalic touches there and then mixed with the leather which also can come off animalic it has a very very animalic presence it's challenging to wear for me it is 
as I say all the time, I can tolerate some animalics. This one is not very easy for me to wear. But let me know if you're a fan of Ombre Eternal. And we're starting off the list with Ombre Eternal, as I said. Moving on, though, we're going to, if I can find it, Ensemble Mythique, this one right here. So Ensemble Mythique uh, came out in 2019. A lot of these did come out in 2019. In fact, three of them, I think, came out in 2019. But the Ombre Eternal launched in 2016, I believe. That was the second one that launched after Santal Royal. But yeah, that one went away. But Ensemble Mythique, for me, does have some animalics, but still a little wearable. And I've ranked it at number seven because it's you know, in the bottom of the list. I don't care for this particular incense fragrance as much as I like other incense fragrances. This one, because it has an animalic presence, and I think that's why, although, as I said, it's not as animalic as Ombre Eternal, but it does go there. But Ensemble Mythique features frankincense, rose, ambergris, woods, patchouli, pink pepper, saffron, and vetiver. So it does have an ambery presence. It's definitely resinous. It's got some balsamic touches. And of course, it's warm and spicy. But although I find frankincense as a note, a more of a cooler, fresh spice rather than something like benzoin, which is also a resin, just like frankincense, more of a warm spice. So, so this one's kind of like in between of uh, warm, spicy, fresh, or uh, not necessarily warm, spicy kind of, so it's kind of stuck in, the, uh, in, in between there. So you do have the warmth in there, but you also have some cool uh, touches in there as well. So it's a uh, kind of uh, ambery, it's woody, and then there's some, you know, a little bit of a rosy presence as, as well. So Ensemble Mythique is at number seven. So those of you that have been following me probably already know what my number one fragrance is from this collection because I speak about it quite frequently. I think it's an amazing fragrance. It is a little animalic, it is a little spicy, but enough to tolerate and appreciate so much. But moving on to number six. Number six is Musk Noble, this one right here. So this one, I believe, used to be in another, uh, in the other collection, and I'll put photos in of the other collection as soon as I remember, but uh, it's a collection I never really, you know, gravitated towards, because I was always into that La Art at La Matier collection, but that other collection of three, or trio of fragrances was not one that I was gravitating towards, but Whatever the, name, whatever the name of that other fragrance collection is, this one, Musk Noble, launched in 2018. And one of the more latter releases, although not as a latter. And I think it's got some staying power because it's definitely got this, some soft spiciness to it. But it's a very, very musky, uh, I guess I would say aromatic, spicy, lightly leathery, rosy kind of a powdery experience with this one. It's a softer experience. It doesn't have more of like a beefy presence as some of the other ones. I would I would call this, I'm not going to say it's a feminine fragrance, but I would call it, the, you know, the more gentle experience rather than uh, the other ones, which can be pretty rough. But Musk Noble features lots of musk with saffron. There's rose, there's cystus labdanum, there's some cedar, geranium, and pink pepper. So when you think of those notes, you've, you've got this powdery musk note in here. It's a beautiful contrast to rose. I think musk and rose do blend beautifully together. I see it come up quite often. And with this one, you've got that spiciness from the saffron, which adds that kind of like light le aromatic leatheriness in there. It's very, very light, so it doesn't really have a full-on leathery presence. But in the base, there's some warmth, and then there's some ambery touches as well, along with some aromatic uh, experience of geranium and some additional spice of the pink pepper. But for me, those are not necessarily like the full-on experience of the fragrance. It's For me, it's mostly about the musk, saffron, rose, and the amberiness from the cystus labdanum. Either way, Musk Noble from 2018 is at number six. But you know what I forgot to mention? All of these fragrances in the Le Absolute de Orient collection are created by Terry Wasser. He is the in-house perfumer at Guerlain, he's been for a while. Lately, there's also been Delphine Jelk, who's been doing perfumes with him. But this particular collection, they're all created uh, by uh, Terry Wasser. Moving on to number five, it's Queer Intense, this one right here. So this one, once again, I think it's quite animalic. Not as animalic as Ombre Eternal. Uh, but it, it gets there because it is a very leathery experience. And there's a little bit of a soury experience as well with the leather. Uh, so there is that kind of presence. And I feel like 
this has some ambergris uh, because Ombre Eternal also has that kind of souriness. Uh, even though they don't mention, uh, you know, ambergris in here, I feel like there is some in the background there. So the leather comes off a little sour, very, very masculine. This is a very masculine fragrance. I think this whole entire collection is pretty masculine to me, except for Musk Noble. I should be upfront about that too. So they are unisex targeted, but definitely they lean very, very masculine to me because of the notes they're using. But queer intense features, notes of leather, osmanthus, cedarwood. But you know, for me, it's mostly about the leather with the cedarwood. I think that osmanthus note comes in to give a light fruity floral touch to the fragrance. But the overpowering leather and cedarwood note in here creates for a very, very, you know, one-sided or one-dimensional fragrance because there's not a lot of other things happening in here. It's definitely animalic. It's definitely leather. It's definitely woods. There's some light floral touches, very, very light, and it does get powdery. But if you like a kind of like an animalic leather experience, definitely try Queer Intense. But this one, in comparison to Ombre Eternal, I keep referring back to this because this is the one that's the most animalic. Uh, when you refer back to this, it's not as animalic as this one. And even though this is animalic, I can still wear this one, whereas I have a challenging time with Ombre Eternal. So number five, Queer Intense. So this is next one is the most popular, I believe, in this collection. That's what I think it is. But unfortunately, I lent my bottle out to someone and they lost the little tassel on it. I'm so pissed off. I would ne I, I'm never ever going to lend my bottle to anyone. This was a family member and they definitely used up quite a bit of it. So I don't have no ta tassel on this one. But Santal Royal, I believe, is the first fragrance in this collection, 2014. Yes, Ombre Eternal came out two years after Santal Royal. But uh, this has got lingering power, uh, as in staying power for uh, popularity and things like that. And I've also seen, this is a 125 ml bottle. I've also seen a larger size bottle of this, a 200 or 250. I can't remember what size. I saw it once and I was surprised and I thought to myself, okay, that must be a very popular fragrance to have a larger size. I didn't see it on the USA uh, Guerlain website. Probably it was, I don't know where I saw it, but I did see it for sure. But either way, a 2014 launch. This is a you know, it's Santal, sandalwood. So it's a sandalwoody, woody fragrance, but it's a nice combination of uh, sandalwood with uh, rose and also some oody, leathery touches as well. But um, sandalwood, leather, amber, musks, and oud are the note with rose, cinnamon, jasmine, and peach. So lots of stuff going on. You can definitely experience the peachiness, the cinnamony touches, and also the woods. But this is not one of those kind of milky, cozy sandal woods. This one to me also is an experience. So you're not just experiencing the sandalwood. You're experiencing a lot more stuff, even though it's called Santal Royal, even though they're highlighting the sandalwood as what you're going to get. I feel like I get a lot more stuff in addition to the sandalwood, which to me, acts like it's not really the focus note in this particular fragrance because you've got all that uh, you know the leather amber the musks the oud and the rose there it's it's a it's a pretty intense uh composition as in there's a lot of busyness going on in here so if you like busy fragrances definitely try this one out and let me know if this is one of your favorites because i feel like this one gets a lot of hype uh, and people seem to like this one. Either way, Santal Royal is at number four. So I just featured Oud Essential in a video over the weekend uh, and I did a video of Oud fragrances that I'm not really or I haven't really spoken about. This wasn't as high up as it is on this list in comparison to that list. That list was an Oud fra fragrance list and in comparing to other Ouds, this is a little lower but in comparing it to this collection, it's higher, if that makes sense to you guys. So Oud Essential came out in 2017, and I think it's definitely a great Oud fragrance, and it kind of hints at an Oudy version of Boise Mysteria. Do you guys get that like me? Let me know, put a comment down. But it's definitely a really solid oud fragrance. It definitely has the leathery touches. I feel like leather kind of goes through the whole entire collection, most of it, and it definitely is uh, present here. But this one also features, in addition 
addition to the wooden leather, there's saffron, cedarwood, rose, geranium, incense, guyac wood. That uh, saffron keeps coming up. Rose also keeps coming up. After all, it's called Le Absolute de Orient, so it's kind of inspired by the Middle East. Saffron definitely is a major uh, presence in the Middle East. So it's a great oud, actually. It's more like a Western oud experience, but still, I think they did a great job, job with this particular one. At least Terry Wasser did at Guerlain. It's a, definitely a great wearing experience. So you've got lots of oudy touches, leathery touches, and of course the warm, spicy woodiness in here. There is definitely a little bit of an ambery presence and lightly animalic and smoky. Not very, very big. So this one's definitely wearable. I feel like if you're going to compare it to the uh, the queer one, uh, the queer intense, this one is not as animalic as queer intense. But either way, Oud Essential from Guerlain, launched in 2017, is at number three. So number two is Patchouli Ardent. So again, I'm a little uncertain about Patchouli Ardent. Is it really discontinued in the States? Again, Guerlain does a lot of this. They only leave certain fragrances for us. For example, the Lom Ideal collection, I think they only have three or four, maybe three I think, only selling here. And then the rest are available in Europe the entire collection, minus the cologne. The cologne definitely permanently got discontinued. And I'm, I have a feeling that Guerlain's doing the same thing with this one. Maybe it doesn't sell in the States, so they're removing it. You can still buy it at some discounters and things like that, but if you travel to Europe, uh, you can pick it up there. I don't know, as I said, but it's completely removed off the USA website. But this launched during the height of the pandemic in 2020, and it's definitely a really solid patchouli fragrance. It's once again a leathery, rosy patchouli fragrance, and definitely not the chocolate cakey patchouli that I talk about. This is definitely also a, a dry patchouli patchouli rather than a syrupy patchouli, so there's a dry dryness about it. And in fact, I think the, the entire collection seems pretty dry to me, not very ambery syrupy. I mean, there's ambery touches, but it doesn't have that kind of liquidy, kind of uh, flowy, syrupy, molasses-y experience. They seem dry to me. But this is all about rose, leather, musk, patchouli, fig, pink and black pepper, and cedar. And that fig note definitely comes in, and even though the Guerlain website, well, although it's no longer on there. I don't think they've mentioned the fig, or maybe they did, I can't remember now. But there is definitely a figgy presence here. It's got like this kind of figginess, and you can experience not only the fruit, uh, but also the uh, actual tree or leaves as well. So that's definitely a nice contrast to the, the rose leather and the musk and the patchouli. It's a great fragrance. That's why I've uh, selected it at number two. Again, I'm not uh, certain about the uh, what the, the status of this particular fragrance is, we shall see. But if you're a fan of it, get yourself a bottle because I don't know what's gonna happen in the States. And the last fragrance, or the first fragrance I should say, is my favorite fragrance from this collection. It's a, definitely a winner. It's Bois Mysterio. And as I said earlier, it does kind of remind me of, these two kind of remind me of one another. This fragrance as this would be an Udi version of this kind of thing. Uh, spices seem similar. It's got, um, Lots of spiciness in here, but it's a it's kind of a leather once again, but it's a woody leather and also very spicy. They don't mention cumin. I pick up that cumin spiciness, that sparkliness in here that I really, really like. It's an, enough to enjoy as it is because itself, uh, it's not a lot to me, but some people are very sensitive to cumin, so it could be a turnoff. Um, this uh, is a 2019 launch once again, and it features cedar, patchouli, myrrh, leather, bay laurel, jasmine, neroli, and as I said, the cumin definitely pops in this, and it's absolutely amazing. It's very, very sexy. It's a little animalic, but definitely lots of leather and oud, some aromatics, ambery touches and spices. Uh, it's a dry fragrance once again, and as I said, all of these fragrances seem dry to me. They're definitely not like the uh, fragrances in the La Art et La Matier collection from Guerlain, whereas those are definitely syrupy and flowy, ambery kind of molassesy. These seem very dry, but Bois Mysterio definitely deserves the number one spot in this collection. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Well, let me know what your thoughts are on this price hike from $200 to $260. Isn't that outrageous? How come that high? Is this all because of supply and um, all the issues that we're having with uh, you know shipping getting stuck and not getting delivered? I don't know. Most likely these are going to stay. Um, 
that's a lot of money. Uh, there's a major price hike for these fragrances. I mean, $200 uh, to $260. But I think they started out around $180 when they first launched here. And then they went up to $200. Now we've got $260. It's outrageous. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on the, uh, you know, the price hike. And also let me know uh, these fragrances. Are you fans of these fragrances? Do you like them? If you have all of them, how would you rank this list? Put a comment down so I can find out. Either way, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.